Okay, so um, today we want to look at the infrared spectroscopy. This is for the 91388 standard. Now there are three parts to this task. I mean you only get one assessment task, um, but you have to use the infrared spectrum, the mass spectrum, which we'll do in, in another lesson, and the NMR spectrum, which we'll be doing in the next lesson, and you've got to relate those two together and then analyze it so you can work out the molecule. Now this standard is actually really easy to achieve. So if you can just do one or two of these points for the infrared spectrum and one or two points for the IR, for the NMR or for the mass spec, you've passed the standard. Okay, to get merit and excellence there's a bit more, so, and I will be doing this to merit to excellence level. So we're going to just be looking at what does it look like, what, you know, how, what are they used for, and how we analyze them. <clears throat> Just a bit of background of how it works. Um, infrared has got a particular energy. The, you know, if, if you think of the whole electromagnetic spectrum from radio waves going to infrared, going to visible, going to UV and so on. Um, the infrared doesn't have a very high energy, but it's got enough energy to affect the bonds in a molecule. So what you see there, I'm sort of showing how the bonds can vibrate. They can stretch in and out or they can do where one bond stretches and the other one doesn't. That's an asymmetric stretch or it can bend or it's sometimes called a wag for a, for a bend so because it wags in and out um, or it can vibrate in different planes and each of those requires a particular frequency of energy uh, or particular frequency of infrared wavelength and that will therefore give a different signal on um, the spectrum. So that's just a bit of background. You don't need to know that. You just need to analyze it, um, but just to explain uh, how it works. And it works particularly on polar bonds, but as I hope you know from your uh, 304 2, where you've got the temporary dipole uh, um, attractions form because the electrons can move around the molecule. Um, there's always a slight dipoles being formed as electrons move around, so it does actually affect any bond, but the more polar the bond, often the stronger it's affected, the, the more energy it will absorb. So that's what a spectrum looks like, and you'll see it on page 7 of 3021. So there's a number of things to um, just work out when you um, see a spectrum like this. The first thing is um, the y-axis looks at the percentage transmission. You can get um, infrared spectra that do percentage absorption or percentage transmission. I'm only going to give you the percentage transmission. So what you see in the booklets will be similar to what you get in the task. Uh, just in case you go somewhere else and you go, oh those look slightly different. They're just the reverse. So pretty much what happens, sorry, I'm just trying to see my cursor. If you've got a strong downwards peak, or trough if you want to call it, it means all this energy is being strongly absorbed and very little energy can escape and be, be transmitted. So there's a strong absorption here, and where there's nearly 100% transmission, it means that energy can pass straight through the molecule and it's actually not doing anything. So those are the first things, looking for the peaks uh, or troughs and the other non-areas. The other thing is I get my spectra from a Japan site, in fact I think most of the world does, um, they've got an enormous database and their infrared spectra, they change their scales. So if you look at, I hope this is clear enough, can you see this x-axis or are these numbers too small? You can. Well, it's also in the booklet. But you can see this is 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. Or if I go here, 1500, 1600, 1700, 1800, 1900, 2000. And now, can you see if I carry on 2100, 2200, the gaps are a lot smaller. So that's 2500 here, and then 3000. So that's just to try and condense this bit up so that we don't have. Uh, enormous, long, drawn-out, flattish spectra. It's just to make those peaks a lot sharper. That's why they've condensed it on that area. Royal Society, I think, uses the same scale all the way through, so just be careful of where you look. 
um, just be aware that in some spectra the scale changes at 2000 and others it don't it doesn't you will be getting in the task things like this um, so that's the uh, third thing you got to look out for then also uh, for excellence you do need to give units so remember that the units if you're saying where a spec um, where a peak or trough occurs you need to give it as a particular a wave number so say just below 3000 centimeters to the minus one um, so a wave number is the inverse yes of one over wavelength well done correct um, so it's in centimeters to the minus one that's all you have to know about the unit don't worry otherwise about frequencies or energies or formulae or anything like that um, and the final thing is this area over here from 1500 down is what we call the fingerprint region so say for instance you want to analyze a particular um, chemical um, say they think somebody has been poisoned by a certain chemical what they can do is they can run a pure sample of that chemical from your blood or wherever they got it uh, through an IR and if it matches like a fingerprint this area because these peaks are very distinct for a particular molecule then you can you, you know what the molecule is so it's exactly how they work your fingerprints um, you do it the same in the chemical fingerprint so this area that we don't use because you don't get a database you can't compare you've got to analyze it standalone so this area is some you sort of ignore so I can't see my cursor there so this fingerprint region from 1500 down from 1500 up you do look at okay so that will tell you your functional groups this just gives supporting information so I've mentioned your functional groups so this is what we find out from an IR and the ones I've done in bold are uh, peaks you will find or they'll be absent so you can say which functional groups are present as well as absent so for instance an OH peak is quite distinct so is a NH2 peak from either an amide or an amine carboxylic acid very distinct some of them aren't very distinct so a, um, ester is not very clear nor is a haloalkane so but all these others are quite clear um, based on your functional groups you can tell what elements are present so carbon and hydrogen will always be present and you'll see that when we do our first one if I have an OH present or a carboxyl group present as I said those are very distinct peaks can you say whether I've got oxygen present or not well you, you can because if a carboxyl group is present the carboxyl group has oxygen so therefore oxygen must be present if a carboxyl functional group is showing perhaps my question wasn't worded very well <laughs> and the same thing with nitrogen if if the amine or amide peak is not there you know that nitrogen is not there if an amine or amide peak is there you know that nitrogen is there so it's in that respect the one you can't be sure of is halogens because it's doesn't have distinctive peaks in IR so you can't be sure you can have it as supporting evidence if it's shown in the other spectra but it's not so clear uh, in the IR so very useful to find functional groups there or not now remember it's just as important to say what's not there as what's there now if I look at a spectrum like this uh, it does help to have a an idea of where things go so you don't always have to refer to a table so don't think you have to know these off by heart at all you will be given a table and I'll show you later on in this um, slideshow uh, what the table looks like so it, it is there you do not have to look off by heart as I say first of all fingerprint region from around about 1500 down you ignore um, because it's all the C single bond C or C single bond oxygen or C single bond N or the halogen stretches 
So all the stretches for the carbon, 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 oxygen, in other words, the fairly heavy atoms are down here. You'll find the heavier the atom, the further upfield, uh, actually I'm not, the, well, the, the more cl closer to 500 it is. The lighter the atom in the stretches, the more, uh, the higher the wave number. So the OH, NH, CH, anything to do with H, because H is a very light atom. So anything bonded to H, that H bond will stretch in this area. Okay? Um, CH stretches are down here, and OH, NH stretches are a bit higher up. So just below 3,000 are CH stretches, a little bit higher up are the OH and NH stretches. Um, yes, yes, pretty much. Okay. Then also the um, stronger the bond, um, the more energy it takes to stretch that bond, because the energy is actually the inverse of the wave number. Um, so the lower the wave number, the more energy it actually takes. So um, the double bonds, you can see these are, sorry, I think I've got that wrong. Um, the, sorry, the single bonds are over here, the, the double bonds, and then the triple bonds are higher up. It's, it is harder to stretch. I think I've got myself, the, it's the inverse okay. wave number is the energy. Sorry, I, I, I confused myself. So energy is the inverse of the wave number. So actually, it's more energetic as you go down. Do you agree with that? <laughs> Sorry, I, I muddled myself up. So the single bonds are here because they don't need as much energy. As you make a double bond, it's a stronger bond, so it needs more energy to pull and you know pull apart and bend and, and so on. And then a triple bond is even higher. Now, you don't do triple bonds because we don't do alkynes. So we ignore anything over here. Yes, correct. OK. Although, um, yeah, so this, this direction um, is going towards, as you say, the, the visible and therefore finally the gamma. And this side is going the other way, which is going towards the microwave um, and so on because we're doing the inverse of the wave number, uh, inverse of the wavelength. Right, um, so that's just a general idea. Now, those are the stretches we've given. I will we'll talk about WAGs later, um, just because there are a few sort of anomalies, like the uh, NH WAG comes round about here, and that's a good one sort of to know just for the amines and amides when you see a little funny peak over here. Okay, um, so that is sort of a summary. The lower the mass, the higher the wave number. And as I said, it's because um, it, vi it vibrates faster. So you're going to find the CCL over here, CBR further down, and so on, and the CH up here, by the, just under 3,000. Um, and then, as I say, the wave number uh, increases with increasing strength of bond. So you've got the triple bonds stronger than the double bonds, which is stronger than the um, single bonds. Now, when we analyze them, we look at four different regions. And if you do it in a systematic way, you won't miss out. So you should get excellence if you do it in the systematic way, because it means you're looking at every part of the spectrum. So you find your, uh, your first thing is you always look for that 3,000 line. And then you look slightly below that line, so around about 2,900. Because 2,900 in this area is the alkyl stretches, the CHs. So if there's something there, you've got an alkyl group. Okay. If there's lots, if it's a big peak or trough, then you've got normally lots of them. If it isn't very much, you don't have very much CH. Second step is you look slightly to the left, so around about 3,100, and you see if there's a peak over here. And if there's a peak over here, it means you've got a CH stretch, but that carbon is part of a double bond. Because remember what we said, double bonds are always higher up. So that's why it's, that CH stretch has gone from the 3,000 uh, or 2,900 to 3,100 because um, it's been affected by the double bond. So that's the CH stretch with the C is to a double bond. 
So that's region two. Then we look further over, so round about 3,500 in this area, 3,500 to 3,300. And this region here for number three gives me my NH stretches, so it tells me if I've got an amine or amide, and my OH stretches, so it tells me if I've got an alcohol or a carboxylic acid. And then the final thing is the double bonds. So if I've got anything in this region, so round about from 1600, okay, um, 1600 to 1800, sorry, I can't see my um, cursor, there it is. So round about 1600 to 1800, that will tell me if I've got a carbon-carbon double bond, so an alkene, or if I've got a carbon-oxygen carbon double bond, so any carbonyl group, so an aldehyde, a ketone, a carboxylic acid, an amide, an acyl chloride, an ester. So that will all show up here. Any questions so far? Nope. Okay. So this is the infrared or IR spectrum for the pentane. And I've highlighted the key points here, and you'll see all we've got is CH and CC bonds. You've got all this other little stuff here, and that's from the other types, the, the WAGs and the everything else. And the, but you can see these clear stretches. Notice it's in the fingerprint region. It's below 1,500, so we tend to ignore that bit. The CH uh, stretch is the alkyl group just below the 3,000. So when you're analyzing it, remember you look for the 3,000 slightly to the left, and you say, aha, I've got an alkyl group. You look slightly to the right, it's empty. I do not have an alkene, or at least a hydrogen attached to a carbon of a double bond. I look further, region three, further to the left, it's also empty. So I don't have any alcohol, I don't have any amine, I don't have any amide. Or I don't have a carboxylic acid either, because I don't have an OH, because an OH is in both an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Then I go all the way um, to the right, just before the fingerprint region, of course, that's empty, so I know I don't have an alkene and I don't have any functional group that contains a carbonyl group. So no aldehyde, no ketone, no carboxylic acid, no acyl chloride, no ester, no amide. So all I've got here is an alkane. You could have a haloalkane, but you can sort of say it's not likely because I don't have very many stretches here for the CCL. You will see an example later for that. But that's more or less what an alkane looks like. This is an alkene now. And can you notice there's my alkyl group just below 3,000? But there's my CH stretch where the carbon the hydrogen is attached to is a double bond carbon. And here's my CC double bond as well. It's round about six, it's between 1600 and 1700. Okay, the alkene double bond tends to be always slightly more uh, a lower number, a lower wave number than the carbonyl. Carbonyls start from around about 1650 uh, to about 18, and alkene is round about 1620 from 1600 to 1650. So there's a slight overlap there. So first thing, you go for the 3000, look a bit to the left, sorry, a bit to the right, you know it's an alkyl group there. But to the left, there's a thin medium peak. Now I'm, I'm describing the peak, you should also describe it for excellence. You won't get the description on the table, but seeing you can you're looking at the infrared spectrum right in front of your eyes, you can describe it. You can see it's thin. You can see the absorption isn't very strong. This is a strong absorption peak for the alkyl group, but for the CH double bond, um, it's not as strong, so it's medium. This is what we'd call weak. This would be medium. Over here, these would be strong. That would be a strong peak down here in the fingerprint region. Now you look further to the right in the third area when you... Um, it's empty, there's nothing there, so you know it's not an amine, aldehyde, amide, carboxylic acid. You look now to the um, right in the fourth area, and you can see there's that double bond. So you know this is definitely an, an alkene. Okay, 
I'm going to flip through the various ones and then we're going to do a whole lot of exercises and that's when I ask you questions. Um, this is an example of an alcohol and an alcohol is very clear parabola. It's not always as perfect a parabola but you can rest assured I won't give you something that doesn't look in some way like a parabola. Okay, so if you see a parabola peak like that, it's a no H. Um, and then can you see in the fingerprint area, you've got more of those CC and CO bonds, so there's a lot of muck down here. Anything that has can do hydrogen bonding, so uh, amine, amide, uh, alcohol, carboxylic acid, you'll find tends to have broader peaks like this parabola peak, and it's often broad and muckier on the fingerprint region as well. Um, that's when it's a, a thin film spectrum. So first thing, look for the 3000. We know it's an alkyl group. There's no alkene um, in terms of there's no CH where the C is an alkene um, because there's no peak there. We look further to the left, region 3. There's that broad par parabola peak could call it strong as well because it is usually strong and it's always sort of around about 3,600 to 3,200. We tend to always go from the highest wave number down to the lowest wave number when we give a region area. So these, that's 3,500 here so it's a bit higher, 3,600 to about 3,300, well this is more like 3,200. Um, so we've got an alcohol. We can't see the NH peak because the NH peak is often a more of a medium peak, so that there may be an amine present here, but we can't see it. Um, so we go over to the other side, and there's nothing over here. Um, you tend to see NH wags if there's an NH, and there's nothing really showing there, although that tends to just confirm. But we know there's no C double bond C, and we know there's no C double bond O. So that's what an alcohol looks like. This is a primary amine. There's that wag I was talking about. It's around about 1600, okay? And a primary amine and a secondary amine is, and this applies also to the amide, it's in the NH or NH2 group. Um, it doesn't matter if it's an amine or an amide. If I get two prongs like this, I've got two NH stretches from two NH bonds. If I've only got one stretch, if it's only a single peak, then I've only got one NH bond. So that's the difference between seeing a primary amine, so I've got NH2 where the nitrogen is attached just to one other carbon, um, and it tends to be a weak or a medium peak, but in the NH stretch area. So first thing you do is look for the 3000 mark, then slightly to the right, there's a peak there, strong peak, alkyl. Slightly to the left, nothing there, no alkene. More to the left, there's that uh, twin peak. Uh, so you, we've got a primary amine or a prime primary amide. Okay? Um, so in other words, we've only got one NH bond. There's no parabola for the OH, so we know there's no OH present. And you'll see the carboxylic acid just now, but again, there's nothing big over here for carboxylic acid. And then region 4, it's empty. Um, as I say, you can say, well, what about this one? This tends to be always quite a small peak. You saw with the alkene, it was a thin, medium peak. And you'll see with the C double bond O, it's a strong peak. So we can say this area is empty, apart from this NH bends. Here's an example of a, a secondary amine. Do you notice it's only a single peak? So um, that is the difference between primary and secondary. We've only got one NH stretch here. So the same thing, look for the 3000, slightly below alkyl group, slightly to the left, no alkene, more to the left, there's something there. So it's only one peak, so it's a secondary amine, so it could be an amine or an amide. There's no parabola, so it's not an alcohol. Do you notice I'm always stating what's not there as well as what is there? Because you do need to do well, you need to do that. Okay, so you're all doing supporting evidence of what your final molecule will be. And saying what's not there helps support 
your, um, your structure. And we know this compound doesn't contain any carbonyl group because it's empty. So we know this is an amine and not an amide. Because an amide is C double bond O in H2, and there's no C double bond O stretch over here. So it has to be an amine and not an amide. Any questions so far? No. Okay, I hope I'm not going too fast, but I do want to, I actually, my watch has stopped, so you need to actually keep me in track of time. If it gets close to 2.30, let me know. This is a carboxylic acid, very distinctive. You've got this broad triangular peak where it centers over the 3,000. So if you see this strong, broad triangle, you've got a carboxylic acid. Nice, easy one to recognize. And because it's a carboxylic acid, it's got a carbonyl. And so this is what I mean about that strong um, absorption. At, it's always between um, 1600 and 1800. And if it's a, a carboxylic acid, it's run about from it's, it's 1700 and slightly up. OK. Um, so. If we go through it, uh, we've got an alkyl. We can't see if it's an alkene because that area is covered. We know it's a carboxylic uh, group because, okay, remember the OH was over here, so we know it's not an OH. It's a carboxylic because it goes all the way around. It's really because carboxylic acids do more hydrogen bonding. They've got two ways they can hydrogen bond. Um, and so it's a really broad peak. Okay, it goes all the way from 2,500 to 3,500. And then we've got that strong finger-like um, peak over here, which and it's a carboxylic acid. This area is the same for aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, and esters. So any of those four could be from this carbonyl, but we know it's a carboxylic acid because of this OH broad triangle. Okay, um, I've said acyl chloride, amide, unlikely. Why? And that's because amides are always slightly lower down. They're below 1,700. And acyl chlorides are always higher up. They are just below 1,800. So those are actually quite distinct on your, um, acyl, um, on your infrared. Okay, here's an amide. So an amide, you know this is a primary in that there's two NH stretches here. Um, so in other words, the amide hasn't continued on through the nitrogen bonding onto other hydrogens, uh, other carbons, sorry. Uh, and can you see what I was saying just now about where the, that strong finger-like stretch is? If that's 1,500, that's 1,600, and this is 1,700. So this is below 1,700. The other one was above 1700, just on 1700. So that's always a giveaway tip for an amide. So the same thing, you look at the um, 3000, there is some um, alkyl over here. We don't have an alkene peak over there. We definitely have an NH2 stretch over here. So it's not NH, it's NH2. Um, and in other words, we've got two NH stretches. So I said NH peaks, because there's two of them. Um, and there's your finger-like presence uh, stretch. That's lower down, so we know it's an amide. So we know it's not any of the others, because this peak is too low down. And we know it's not a carboxylic acid either, because A, it's too low down. And B, we don't have that broad triangle. And we know it's not an alcohol either because we don't have the parabola. This is an ester. Esters are the hardest to analyze from an IR because they look like an aldehyde or a ketone. But the other spectra we'll be doing, your NMR and your uh, mass, will help you with that. So when you get something like this, it, this could be an aldehyde peak, it could be a, a ketone, and it could be an ester. They're all pretty similar. So you've got this carbonyl peak, 
bit higher than a carboxyl, but around about the same area, between 17 and 17.50, around about. Um, you tend to see some strong peaks over here because of the C double a C single bond O from the ester, because there's two C O bonds in an ester, so you tend to see more of these stretches down here. So again, 3,000. There's my alkyl. No, I don't have an alkene. No, I don't have a carboxylic group or um, amide or alcohol or amine. And yes, I have a carbonyl. And from its area, it's an aldehyde, ketone, or ester. It could also be a carboxylic acid from the re from the presence of where the um, carbonyl stretches. But we know it's not a carbonyl because oh, sorry, we know it's not a carboxylic acid because there's no triangle centered over 3,000 here. Okay, and acyl chloride. So what we see with acyl chloride, what's distinctive about this one is, uh, can you see how close it is to 1,800? So if that's 1,500, 16, 17, 18, it's just below 1,800. And sometimes it can go over 1,800. So acyl chloride, carbon are on the high end, so they're quite distinctive, just like amides are distinctive because they're in the low end, these are on the high end. And you should also see some CCL stretches in the fingerprint. So those are normally helpful as a giveaway as well to confirm that this is an acyl chloride. So you look for the 3000, I've got an alkyl group, I don't have a key, uh, an alkene, I don't have an alcohol, amide, amine, a carboxylic acid. And I've got a high ace, a carbonyl stretch, um, so it's an acyl chloride. And the others are lower, so it can't be an aldehyde, ester, or ketone. And it's certainly not a carboxylic acid or amide because I don't have anything supporting it on this end over here, above 3,000. Right. There I've superimposed the ester on the acyl chloride. So the one in green is the ester. So, well, green, black. I don't know if it's clear. Can you? Is it clear enough to see the one that this ester peak? Can you see it's a bit lower down than the acyl chloride? Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm showing it's quite distinctive that the ester, the aldehyde, the ketone, is certainly lower down than the acyl chloride. Um, notice also in the fingerprint area. Well, as I say, you only use this for supporting evidence. Can you see the peaks in black from the acyl chloride tend to be lower down because the chloride is heavier than an oxygen, so you're there further uh, with a lower wave number, whereas the um, CO stretches tend to be round about 1,000, 1,200, round about this area. So that's where your ester CO peaks are. Um, so that's just, sometimes it's not seeing it superimposed. I did in the booklets make it quite superimposed, but once the booklet was printed, I saw it actually made it quite difficult to read, so I hope it's not too bad. Okay, I think this is my last one I'm doing as a functional group, and that's the haloalkane. And can you see, it's nearly like an, uh, an alkane, so there's my CH stretches, these are my CC stretches, and although you could confuse these also for perhaps some COs, but they're all my CCs. The COs are, tend to be a little bit down here uh, in this area, and these my CCL stretches. Um, so they're supporting evidence. You couldn't, though, when I gave, give you an IR just by itself, saying this is a haloalkane, because remember I said the um, fingerprint area is for supporting evidence. You need to have better evidence from another spectra explain why this is a haloalkane. And where you would get this from is from your mass spectra. That'll tell you clearly whether you've got a chlorine or not. Okay, so the same thing, 3000, I've got an alkyl, no alkene, no alcohol, carboxylic acids, and so on and so forth. No carbonyl group or no alkene. And as I say, we can use this as supporting evidence for a halogen. Oh, I've got aldehydes and ketones still, sorry. Aldehydes and ketones, Similar to esters, aldehydes have two things fairly distinctive, and that is what we call the W stretch that tends to be hidden 
in the alkyl stretch. So it's a W that goes there and then up. You can just see this middle part of the W and then the other bit's hidden over here. Um, it also tends to get a bit of an anomaly that you sometimes get a peak over here that you think could be a secondary amide. So um, just careful with the amide. You can see the difference is that the um, amide will be below 1700, whereas an aldehyde will be above 1700. So that's the difference. If you're going, oh, do I have a, a secondary amide? Look where that carbonyl is. And then you can, but not always, see this W. Sometimes that W is really hidden. Um, so this is not a, it's lovely if it's there to confirm it, but it may not be there. So here we go, 3,000. I've got alkyl groups. No, I don't have alkenes. I may have an NH, okay, because we haven't looked to the right yet. So we think, oh, I might have a secondary uh, amine uh, or amide there. But now I look for the carbonyl in that area, and it's an aldehyde or ketone um, area. It's not an amide because it's too high up an amide would be lower. Um, as I said, this is also the area for an ester, and this, these could be some CO stretches. We're not too sure. So I actually meant to put that in green, the ester, because it doesn't quite look like it, but it could be. But we know it's not an amide. It's too, the carbonyl's too high up, and we know it's not an acyl chloride because it's further down from an acyl chloride, and it's not a carboxylic acid because we don't have that broad triangle. And we know it's not an alcohol because there's no parabola. And uh, finally, as I say, that hidden W is just that extra bit for aldehydes which may or may not be clearly seen. And the last one is the ketone. And can you see how similar it is? You will not get any W peak over here. And there tends to be less of an anomaly that we have for the aldehydes. Um, by the sort of NH stretch. But you can see that the ketone and the aldehyde is a very similar area. So ketone, aldehyde, ester, carboxylic acid, all on a similar area. So we go through it. There is an alkyl, no alkene, nothing there. Um, and this is an area, so it's aldehyde, ketone, or ester. These could be some CO stretches, so we're not sure if we can't say it's not an ester we've got to say it could still be an ester. It could be any one of these, even though I've told you this is actually a ketone. And hopefully by now you could tell me why it's not an amide. Okay, correct. There's no strong, uh, well, no, there's no, it's actually a medium peak in this area. And the second reason why it's not an amide, so we don't have any NH, but we also know it's not an amide because the wave number is too high. Remember, amides are below 1,700. This one may not be very clear to see because these numbers are pretty small, but this one's above 1,700. And for the same reason, it's not an acyl chloride. We can say it, state that clearly because, uh, well, there's no supporting evidence for CL peak, CCL stretches over here. Well, there's one little peak over there, so perhaps. But if it was an acyl chloride, the peak would be higher up. So we know it's not an acyl chloride. Why is it not a carboxylic acid? There's no triangle centered over that 3,000. OK. Good. So now, this. I know the numbers are really small, <laughs> so um, I don't mind if you guess wrongly in terms of the position of that carbonyl because you won't be able to see it clearly. But this is the t a table that I've shown here on the um, on the right here is what you're going to be getting in the assessment task. So you can see here the CH. Remember, I've said you look just slightly to the uh, right of that 3,000 because it's around about 2,900, around about there, 2,950 to 2,800. The alkene, the CH um, stretch, can you see there, from 3,100.
1,800 to just below, just above 3,000. And the alkene is from um, 17 to about 1630. So the alkene stretch is always slightly further, a lower wave number than the carbonyl one. If you're looking for carbonyl, it's 17, uh, 1730 to 1700. Here's one acyl chloride, 1810 to 775. As you can see, it's higher. Uh, the ester is uh, 1750, 1735. So we do tell you, um, you know, you just have to look at where things are and see where it matches up. So you don't have to learn numbers off by heart. You have got the table that you can tear out and use next to you. I also strongly recommend that you write all your possibilities on the spectra because we will use that, especially when you haven't explained things clearly in the in the writing part, in the discussion part, we will look for evidence on the spectra that you, any comments you've written. So write as much as possible. You know, you could say here, C double bond O, you know, and then say uh, C double bond O C L and draw a line through it, you know, to say it's too high or, or you don't even have to write that. But you could write all what could probably be there by putting a question mark um, and what's not there by drawing a line through it. So, what would you like to guess is the first one? What functional groups could be there? Um, okay, it certainly has an alkyl group, but there's an alkane by itself won't have any other functional group, and there is another functional group there very clearly. Okay, yes, yeah, so we've got an alkyl, but if we're saying, okay, what, I, I know we are looking uh, you must probably be following the pattern. So now follow the pattern in your head and go, right, I've looked for the 3,000, which you most probably can't see. I should have highlighted it with a line here to help. So you look, right, you've seen the carbonyl. So you, so you see it's an alkyl, you see it's not an alcohol and all that sort of stuff. So you know it's not a carboxylic acid or a amide, and you see it's a carbonyl. Now, it's a bit difficult for you to see, but it's around about 1720, if I give you that. Um, what do you think the functional group could be? So you can't just say CO, you know, you start off with that, right, aldehyde or ketone. And it won't be an ester uh, because you've got no strong bonds over here. Um, uh, I just want to point out, by the way, if you're wondering why these gaps are here, this is the only one I've given as an example of what we call a dilute sample. All these others are thin film. So the gaps are where the solvent has interfered with the solute. So the solute is this compound that's showing here. And so they've just had to remove the strong peaks from the solvent. That's what it is. Yes, it's an aldehyde or ketone. And you can, there's actually a very clear, distinct thing here where you actually can see the W very clearly because it's been a dilute sample. In thin film like what these are, um, it's not clear because it's actually of the hydrogen, uh, it's not so much hydrogen bonding, but it, it um, does muck things up a bit. But can you see that very clear W there going to the other peak over there? So we can clearly say this is an aldehyde. And there will be other supporting evidence to make sh to say that you can in, in other spectra, so you can say that's an aldehyde. So right, so could have been a ketone aldehyde, uh, not an ester, perhaps an ester, but probably not because that's why the esters in green because there's no supporting evidence. But the ones in red are definitely no no, and the aldehyde is the one because of that W. What do you think number two is? So go through in your head. Um, 3,000 mark, we know there's an alkyl, um, but just go through it, carboxylic acid. So we know that for, for two things is that broad triangle centered over the 3,000, and there's my carbonyl, and my carbonyl is around about the 1,700. Um, and there's, here's the CO peaks that you get from um, the, C, the CO for the COH part. And so you can do that. You could say, I wonder if there's a haloalkane in here because I've got some strong peaks down here. 
Um, so it could be a maybe. If there's supporting evidence from elsewhere or if there is proper evidence from elsewhere, we can use this as supporting evidence. But we know it's not an amine, we know it's not an uh, alkene, uh, and it's not an acyl chloride because it's uh, too um, too much in the middle. So it's not an acyl chloride and it's not an amide on the other, other side. What about number three? Well done, well done. Um, because I th you know, students may think that that is that broad triangle, but the clue mm. here is think of where that one is. That's why I've done them one below each other. Can mm. you see that's centered around the 3000? This is mm. not centered around the 3000. This is centered around about 3400. It's way too high for a carboxylic acid. So this is actually, if you look very carefully, you've got two little peaks going up there. So is that primary or secondary? Primary. And we've got a peak over here that isn't very strong like a carbonyl. So we're mm. not too sure if this is that NH wag, okay, or if it's a weird carbonyl. Okay, so it's a primary amine, it may be an amide, we would need supporting evidence. If we look at where this is, it's 1500, 16, it's sort of in the right area for an amide, a little bit low, it's, it's more the case where the WAG is. Uh, you would, so to clearly distinguish whether this is the amine or the amide, I would need evidence from elsewhere. So what I'm trying to stress is, I do not expect you to look at an IR spectra and tell me exactly what it is. You do need to look at all three spectra to be able to do that. But if you're just going for achieved, if you just simply identify this as a primary uh, NH, so a primary amine or amide, you would have ticked that, that box. You know, you've got to tick a box for each of the spectra and then you can pass. So in this case, it is an amide. It's a bit of a weird one, okay? Uh, I put carboxylic acid in green mm. just in case you were tricked by thinking it's a broad triangle, but we know it's not because it's not centered properly. The, and the amine mm. is again because, as I say, I should have actually put this one in blue. I just highlighted the one because I know it was an amide where I took it. So yes, it's a primary amide. And it's not an ester, halalkane, or, or acyl chloride, any of those others. Okay. What is number one in this one? A ketone and ester? Mm -hmm. It may even be an aldehyde because there could be a little bit of a W in there. And remember, aldehydes also have always these ketones, not as much. Ketones can sometimes have this, but aldehydes often tend to have some weird things down here. Uh, it's just the way they are. Can I just ask actually what the time is? Because as I say, my watch has stopped, so I'm not sure how much time I've got left. 20 past. Oh, just 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, I can make this PowerPoint available if you want more practice. But yeah, so we'll go through. This actually is a ketone. It's not an aldehyde. Um, and as I say, you would need supporting evidence from the others. It could be, as you say, an ester, so I've put it in green um, because they look like some strong, they're a little bit high for an ester, but it could be. These are more the CC stretches, but as I say, fingerprint, it's always muddled. But we know it's not an alcohol and we know it's not an alkene and it's not an acyl chloride because this is too low. It has a higher number for an acyl chloride. Similarly, we know it's not an amide because it's too high uh, because it's over 1700. This, and I'm going to go, okay, you want to go? It's an alcohol. It's an alcohol with, what do you see just in that second region I ask you to look at? Can you see there's something very distinctive? An alkene. So this is a molecule that has two functional groups. It has the alkene and an alcohol. And you will be getting something, I can tell you that right now, one of your um, examples will be something with two functional groups in it. Okay. Uh, so don't always think it's only one. 
one of them will have two. So it has an alcohol because it brought parabola, and you can see it's an alkene from that. And this, and notice how it's actually quite, we call it weak here. It's usually medium, but it's always a thinnish peak. Think of a carbonyl, it's much broader, it's more finger-like. Uh, Alcetyl bond C is always thin. Uh, and we know it's there's no acyl chloride, amide, ester, aldehyde, ketone, because we don't see that carbonyl peak there. And there's unlikely to be haloalkane because there's nothing down there. But again, we would need supporting evidence. This one, uh, can you see the W? That's always like a giveaway. So um, often you'll, when you see enough spectra, you'll just see it and go, ah, I know what it is. But always then go through the systematic route of um, checking because we don't want you to miss something because you f focus on something and then you forget to check the others. And you have to always remember, say, not just what is there, but what is not there as well. You don't have to list every single functional group that's not there, but at least three, you should be able to explain why at least three of them are not there. And this is an aldehyde. And it's because this is in the right peak area for the carbonyl, and it's at W. And that's often that anomaly that you get. And I hope you can work out why we don't have any of the others. The ester we don't have simply because there's nothing really in the fingerprint region. But it's good to have supporting evidence from elsewhere. OK, uh, this one here, um, if you just look at it, I would say straight away ester or acyl chloride, oh, sorry, ester or um, alkene or something with a haloalkane. So if I look over here, I've got an alkyl group, OK? These are tiny little things sticking out there for that H attached to the C double bond. So that's an alkene. Um, this looks sort of, uh, actually not an ester, because it's below 1700. I was misreading there. That's why I was thinking of an ester. And I was looking at all those things. That's why I said ester. But I can, once I've focused on things, and I looked at where exactly it is, I can cancel out ester because it's below 1700 at the peak, whereas an ester you can see over here is 1750 to 735. Um, all the fingerprint area made me think of C double bond O, but these actually, uh, this is one with two functional groups in it. It has a double a C double bond C and it also has a chlorine in it. So you get a lot of the scump over here. So there's an example of a molecule with two functional groups. Uh, this one, I would say just looking at it, it this looks um, like a haloalkane. Definitely not anything with a carbonyl group. So you can immediately take out five or six functional groups because there's no carbonyl. And you can take out a lot more because there's nothing over here either. So no alcohol or amine. And so you're left with an alkane. And it's a haloalkane because of these peaks over here. I think I showed this particular one earlier on or a similar one. Could have been uh, an isomer. And this one is a primary amide. Uh, actually, uh, 15, 16. 15, 16, 17. Uh, no, this is not a primary amide. Uh, this peak is too high. Good for just spotting. So you're seeing I've got a carbonyl and I've got something down here that looks like two peaks. It's actually three peaks. And the primary amides are very distinctively two peaks. Um, so just like I said, oh, ester, because it looks like from these, have a gut feel, but then analyze carefully. And this is too high. You can't see it clearly. Um, but it's closer to 1800. So this is actually an acyl chloride, and it's supported also by those peaks down here in the fingerprint. But you would also need other evidence from elsewhere. So, um, oh, I'm actually wrong. Because th this is what I've got here. It's an ester with a, a chlorine uh, in it. So I'm, I'm looking cross-eyed. It looked closer to 1800, but it is actually dead between 17 and 18. So it is still in the area for an ester. And I suppose this is also the area for the C double bond O. 
But it's in a way good that I'm wrong because it shows you you can't be totally definite just based on one spectra. You do need supporting evidence from other spectra. So in a way, I'm glad I went wrong there. OK, uh, just type in 2.30 when I've gone uh, <laughs> because then I can stop. Time's up. OK, so I can make this available, uh, if you like. Um, but otherwise, I've just got a few more to go. But do you think you can analyze the spectra? You can see you type pink. OK, right. So. Um, you, you will, though, with practice, get get it a, a lot more. So I'll just click on this so that people can, if you wanted to see it, you can there. And as I say, with practice, it'll become like second nature. So thank you, and we'll do the NMR next week. So bye.